Hello, welcome to this Blender topic on depth of field. Depth of field is the difference between the nearest and furthest away object that will appear reasonably sharp through the lens of a camera, or in this case, through the camera in Blender. We have a scene here, the setup for this. There's a background, um, a plane, a bent plane. There's an array of monkeys, a couple of markers, there are cones, this one cone here and this one cone there. I'm calling that cone by the name of main focus marker. And I'm using it in conjunction with this camera here, which is, uh, we'll look at that and say it's a 35 millimeter camera, focal length is 35. And I've already set the depth of field focus to main focus marker. So let's render that, press F12, and see what th that gives. Okay, that wasn't what I had in mind. Uh, we're just rendering the view here, so I'll uh, go back to 3D view and uh, make sure I'm control zero back in the camera. Now, now we can render. And what you get now is the typical infinite focus of Blender. There is no depth of field experience here in spite of the fact that I actually have a focus set. Well, the reason to that is that you need to use the composting function to make that depth of field work. It's something that is done in post-processing over here. You have the composting checked and then you have to use nodes. Click this here and you get a render layer and an image, which if you render it, will give you the same thing as before, it will just be an infinite uh, focus. So what's missing is this, you need a filter, a defocus filter. So put that in between these ones and it will sense the image. But we also need the Z, the Z buffer because that's the depth of the camera. You can see it instantly turned all blurry, but uh, we can uh, change that by using the Z buffer and the, the F stop is set at 128 by default which is infinite focus or very deep focus. So let's lower that to 2 and if you're a photographer you might know that a lower F stop it means a larger aperture opening, more light but more shallow depth of field and we can see that here in the preview. Let's press F12 to render I think I'm going to change this to 100% so our subsequent renders will be a little bigger. Press control up arrow and you can see how now uh, this is where we have our focus and the foreground and background is blurred. Press control up arrow, go back here. And let's, so th uh, before we go back to the default, this is now what we need. We have everything we need to create depth of field a render layer, an image layer in between them, the defocus, we're using the C buffer, and we control this through the F stop. And I haven't set max blurring yet. I'm leaving it zero, which means that there is no limitation to it. So let's go back to the default here and choose 3D. And I would like to look through the other camera, so I'm right clicking on it. Let's look at its parameter. It's a 200 uh, millimeter focal length and it has the background marker, which is this green one here as its focus. So I, if I press control zero, I will look through that camera and press F12, I render it. And with longer lenses in an actual camera, you'll get an even more pronounced effect by the depth of field, a larger uh, aperture opening, in other words, a small uh, f-stop number will give you a real shallow uh, depth of field. As you can see here, it gets kind of touchy. It's the, the, the thing that I wanted to be in focus is only part of it that's in focus. So then the cure for that is to change the, um, go back to com composting and change the f-stop. Let's change it to 8 and press F. You can see in the preview down here that changes. So we'll press F12. 
and I press uh, control up arrow to s look at the whole thing. And now more of the object is in focus. Also, one thing that happens with this is that, that I'm zooming in a little bit, scrolling in with my mouse wheel. You can see that this is, uh, has kind of a granularity to it, and that might be something that you don't want. So I'll press Control up. And there's a way to deal with that, and that's, of course, Part of that is the max blur, and you can crank it up quite a bit. I have it at 9. Uh, I go back to the default because I would like to, for you to see something that relates to this. And that is that uh, in, since this green cone here is what controls the depth or the focus focal point for this camera, if I select it with the right mouse button and then I pull on on the x-axis here you can see that this yellow cross here or this yellow cross moves along the uh, focal axis so that tells you where the focal plane will be if I press ctrl C you go twice go back to here so this is where that focal plane is if we now render this again with the, the max uh, max blur set to 9 will be a little bit more palatable I think but just depends on how uh, you know, what what kind of effect you would like to have so you see that the, these edges here looks almost like they're pixelated and we we'll see if we can maybe make some difference there by going back to composting and add uh, another filter and this one is a little bit kind of hidden it's a filter filter uh, it's hard to you know know what it is before you've seen it and there, there's a soften filter and let's see if we can yeah the the factor is you know maximum is is one so you can either have no factor of softening at all or just uh, um, lower it or you can have maximum or lower there's no way to crank it up beyond this point here that we're that we experience so let's uh, press f12 and um, control up arrow and now if we zoom in here that pixelation sense is is more or less gone here it's not as pronounced so the edges I mean even if it's blurred at least to my liking you want it blurred not uh, pixelated so I mean it's not pixelated it just looks like it's pixelated uh, and you can choose of course also between uh, well I want to go back to previous here and uh, you can choose between uh, several Boken types. In other words, how it's how this uh, granularity happens. If it's circular, or octagonal, or you know pentagonal, or whatever you want. So you can experiment with that, of course. And I've done some experimentation on my own, and that is I've uh, um, I have some lighting alternatives, and this is just to uh, kind of demonstrate how integral lighting and uh, camera is yes. and I'll, I will turn off our hemispherical light I just turn it down to zero and there are some area lights that also are used to accentuate uh, the illumination here I can uh, probably move this one over here a little bit so I, what I would like to is to have uh, several points of light at points of interest uh, so let's try to get in position here and see this light here it's an area light and its uh, energy is 0 0.2 and distance is 15 and that way I'll, I'm hoping to get a focused focused area of light over this 
uh, it's not a, quite the same as a, a spotlight it's just this uh, you can get an area illumined and I'm using a narrow area that's one of the reasons I'm using a, a area light I can get it kind of a, almost as a um, elliptical shape so I'll choose this camera here and we'll look through it control zero to sh shift to it and we'll press F12 to see how this effect is in this case there's a little bit too illumination too much in illumination in the foreground I think that's why this is not quite as successful I'll choose this one here and turn it down to zero in this case the light kind of hits this other one more so it almost causes a confusion of focus or the object that I wanted to point out unless it's the cone I would like to point out becomes you know it's not as clear what's in in, in, in the viewers attention so let's instead try the other one this one here control zero go over to the 200 millimeter and render it and here the light hits a little bit better and uh, creates all already with the illumination it creates this focus of attention on the center here and then the defocus helps even more with that so just before we end I just wanted to kind of recapture that you need the you need to use nodes you need composting there will be a render layer which is here there's only one render layer now you can have more render layers if you want to um, so you can have different settings that you experiment with you absolutely have to have the defocus filter and you have to have this image and if you want to you can have the soften uh, filter between the defocus and the image so I hope you found this useful and uh, if you do uh, please please press the like button and um, we can still be friends uh, and uh, I hope uh, you have a good evening and uh, if you're new to this uh, please subscribe and comment if you have any questions um, so I'll talk to you soon bye bye